Hello everybody, my name is Etienne Maher. I'm working at the ICM Institute at the Aramis Lab under supervision of Stanley Durleman. And I'm glad to introduce you our collaborative work on forecast of the MMSE and ADA 13 scores up to six years ahead with cross cohort replication. This talk is subtitled Prognosis of Overall Cognitive Decline Throughout the Alzheimer's Continuum. So here is the presentation outline. So I'll start briefly by introducing you the context and motivation behind this work. Then I'll show you the methods we used to tackle it. And then I'll show you the main results we have as of today in two parts. First, in the context of the tadpole challenge, and then I'll introduce our forecasting results in a more general perspective, especially focusing on the robustness of our forecasts. So here we go. So what do we want to do? What is the problem we are tackling? Here is a big picture. We want to forecast overall cognitive decline at an individual level, so that is to say to make some kind of prognosis during the Alzheimer's continuum, so from asymptomatic pathological change to dementia, based on individual biomarkers history through standard scales that are broadly assessed, the ADAS cognitive 13 and the mini mental state exam, and at time horizons that are worth it compared to the noise level of these biomarkers. But why do we want to do this? Yeah, what's the rationale underneath? One first possible application is to tailor more accurate research course or help designing clinical trials. Indeed, we could think of forecast as a way to better estimate disease stage for inclusion. For instance, if a clinical trial is planned to last three years, we would like that most of the people we include would have converted to dementia, for instance. So we want to recruit more precisely subpopulation so that we could decrease the sample size of subjects that we are following. A second possible application is to build support information systems in clinical routine. The goal would be to make some prognosis to better anticipate and take patient in charge regarding their probable progression. So here are two main applications that make this task worth it. So that's good, but then you could say, why is this problem not fixed if it's so interesting? Here are a few hints why this task is difficult. So first, something that we should think of is on which population do we want to forecast? And it's not so obvious. So it depends on the application we have in mind. We can forecast on simply people at risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, elderly people with genetic risk factor or so on. We can also predict on people already having the very first pathological biomarkers regarding amyloid classification. So it's not so obvious. Second, we want our method to be accurate. That's obvious. But even if the mean performance is good, it doesn't mean anything on robustness of it. We should be confident our forecasts are balanced among population of interest. And to do this, we must also be confident about reproducibility on never seen cohorts. We must not overfit a particular research cohort. Thirdly, we must understand to what extent our forecasts are dependent on prognosis design. For instance, if we only know baseline value of patients, do we forecast well two years ahead, three years, six years ahead? If we know two or more time points, what's the difference? And last question, how bad are our worst forecasts? 
Another question is, is our method flexible? That means we are not stuck with a particular to the design. We can only leverage baseline value and we can only predict three years ahead and that's it. Or we cannot handle missing data. On the contrary, we want to be flexible so that real world uh, application can occur. Then we want to be interpretable so that our method is not a black box. We should provide some interpretable parameters. So in this sense, for instance, the learning method may not fulfill this goal. And then an open question is, is progression towards uh, Alzheimer's disease really predictable? That was a question open in the top of challenge. So now let me introduce you with our methods, with our disease progression model. What is disease progression model? You can think of the body weight and age for babies, but here is far more complicated because we are facing a neurodegenerative disease with some temporal and alignment between subjects. We somehow need to realign temporal dynamics. So a subject may be younger at disease onset when having the very first clinical manifestation. And then it can have a slow progression or steep progression towards dementia. Then there are also some variability in clinical manifestation. There are some mnesic form, typical form, and then there are some people having a bit different uh, form. So we must also account for this kind of variability. So how does our model work? So there are two main steps. The first one is the calibration of the training. We estimate the joint progression of relevant biomarkers during the course of Alzheimer's continuum at a population level from individual snapshot. What does it look like? So this is an example of such typical disease scenario for Alzheimer's. We can see various biomarkers that are relevant for Alzheimer's disease and their evolution through disease stage. And for each biomarker, there are some abnormality thresholds that provide an hint on how early these biomarkers become abnormal during progression. Then we have a second step which is a personalization. We want to personalize this typical disease scenario to any new individual based on his personal biomarkers history. And so we will be able to characterize him with interpretable parameters, just an overview of these parameters. So we have the long-term disease progression for two biomarkers here, and we have some individual snapshots here. How do we realign all of this? So there are the three parameters I talked about. So there is a time shift linked to age of disease onset. Then there is a pace of progression, an acceleration factor. And then there is an interspacing between biomarkers, which denotes subject specificity in his clinical manifestation. So once we have the typical disease scenario and given individual parameter, we can just estimate all of his progression and especially in future. We can make some prediction. We can then see if our prediction were correct. So that was the sketch of the meta. Now let me present you some of the results. First, in a tadpole setup, because we want to compare our method to state-of-the-art method. I assume that many of you are familiar with the tadpole challenge, so there were three main questions in the challenge or predictable is progression to AD in at-risk individuals. Which data and methods were the best to predict progression? And can we use such methods to improve code selection for clinical design? A partial conclusion was that forecasts were very good for clinical diagnosis and venture prevalence. That were two of the three tasks proposed, but on the other hand, on the third one, predicting ADAS turned out to be very difficult. And no team was able to generate forecasts that were significantly better than guess. And so guess what? 
our proposed model invalidate this last affirmation. Let me show you. So we are looking at the Adascog mean absolute error on the tadpole test set. We see the bootstrap distribution of this uh, mean error to get an insight of the confidence interval. So here are methods that were benchmarked in the challenge. So constant predictions, linear mixed effect model, best challenger over the 60 participants, uh, mean consensus uh, over participant. And here are our three models, this is progression model, uh, with different features included, different modalities. So first ADAS and NLC only, then the same one, but also with hippocampus and ventricle volumes, and then a last one with uh, CSF concentration of PTO. And so we are pretty happy because we are beating challengers consensus uh, over the 60 participants in this context and the randomized best limits that were pointed out. So it's quite promising. And same thing for the ventricles. We are not beating the challenger consensus, but we are at the level of the best challenger. And so we have a model that predicts, well, on the meantime, the Hadas and the ventricle volume. So it's quite promising. But we wanted to go beyond this evaluation. And why? Precisely because of the challenges pointed out. The population on which we want to focus. So we focused on the amyloid positive subject so that we are a clear perimeter of population. Then something that was not assessed in tadpole challenge was the robustness of the techniques. In particular, or reproducible were the results on never seen core. So this is part of the tadpole share initiative. I think it's very important because Overfitting is a major problem in statistical learning. Is our method flexible and interpretable? So we designed it this way, so it's okay. And then is progression towards AD very predictable? Well, we'll see. So here are the cohorts we used as a replication purpose. So we have five cohorts at this point. So we have our main calibration cohort, discovery cohort, which is ADNI. Then we have an European equivalent of ADNI, Pharmacog, an Australian one, Able, a French research cohort, Memento, and Japanese ADNI. But unlike Tadpole Challenge, which was a prospective forecast challenge, here we must do some retrospective forecast. And so how do we do this? We could simply consider the two first visits and predict the last time point. But why not predict in the other one? But in the meantime, cohorts are diverse and there are various inclusion criteria. We want to predict on the whole Alzheimer's continuum. So why not also predicting from the two first follow-ups after the baseline visit? So we generate a whole bunch of prediction with combinatorial ID. So this is made at the cost of independence between forecasts. But it's interesting to have lots of prediction with varying condition. And so we see that we must carefully take into account the prognosis design. So for instance, the time to prediction will matter. So when we will evaluate our performance, we have to take this into account. And so we are making our forecast with our models and we are benchmarking with constant prediction that is not that bad as shown in Stadpole Challenge and a linear mixed effect model with patient's age and a random intercept. So first question, is our method robust among population of interest? To investigate this and investigate the effects of the other cofactors, we conducted a multivariate analysis of absolute errors distribution against interesting cofactors. Indeed, doing multiple univariate analysis would be a pitfall because there are some correlation between all these cofactors. 
So what are we looking at? We are looking at change in MMSC median absolute error compared to baseline, relatively different cofactors that vary among population. So the major result is that the, the maximum absolute error worsening is less than one point of MMSC for all these cofactors. So it's good news because it means that we are robust among population. And then an interesting thing is that forecast will be difficult when patients have already some cognitive decline. Then two other questions arise. Letting aside main population viability, do we reproduce well our prediction on never seen cohorts? And then how dependent are we on prognosis design? So here we are still looking at changes in MMSC median absolute errors on a 30 point scale. But now we are looking at other cofactors First is number of past visits we know when forecasting, other is delay between those visits, and then the time to prediction. As expected, when number of past visits increase, we improve our forecast, but effect is still small. Then effect of delay between these visits is neglectable. More interestingly, time to prediction has an effect as expected baseline is a prediction three years ahead and so for six years ahead prediction we will have a one point mmsc worsening then what about cohorts here we are four test cohorts and good news is that for any of them the maximum worsening is less than a half point of mmsc so it demonstrates strong generalization. Then last questions. We investigate changes on performance, but what are the baseline performance compared to benchmark techniques? And especially, what are these performance on the worst case scenarios? So here we are not looking anymore in a change in MMSC, but rather in the MMSC median absolute error itself. Cofactors that are studied are the cognitive decline profile of subject. So they can either be stable, meaning that they are losing less than one point of MMSC every four years, or they can be normal progressors when it's more than this, but less than five point of MMSC every two years. And then they can be fast progressors when it's worse than that. So we are significantly better than constant prediction and linear mixed effect model. So this is a normal progressor. And then if we look at stable subjects, without surprise, constant prediction is really good and slightly better than us. If we do not account for these cofactors, our prediction are significantly better still. And then, more interestingly, come into play fast progressors. So these subjects are really the hardest subjects to forecast on. We can really see the interest to include neuroimagery as well as CSF biomarker. And there is really a gap between benchmark techniques. So that means on the worst case scenario, we are all good. So this was for the median absolute error. But it's also interesting to look at higher percentiles of absolute error. So here we are looking at the worst 5% errors. And so we find again, same patterns, but on a scale that is a bit worse. For all pooled subjects, our error is about six points of MMSC on the baseline case. We also conducted the same analysis for ADA 13, and patterns and conclusion are about the same. So here come times for conclusion. We built a flexible disease progression model 
that handles longitudinal multimodal data. Our method allows to characterize individuals with interpretable parameters. One interesting application of our model is to predict future biomarkers progression at an individual level. In this task, our model beats state-of-the-art techniques implemented during tadpole challenge. Besides, our model generalizes well on never-seen cohorts, demonstrates empirical robustness, and limits deviation on fast progressor, especially thanks to neuroimagery biomarkers. So thank you all for your attention. Here are two links you may explore. There's the one of our lab, Aramis. And then the second one is the one of the Python package where we implemented our disease progression model. So you can find it on GitLab. It's open source, it's list by. Thank you all. And feel free to ask me any question. I will be pleased to reply.